And I think what's really exciting about film done this way is that interoperability between film and games. You know, what if a game impacted a film? What if a film impacted a game? All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin, here with Aaron, joined by Sarah Buxton, Bux, CEO of Gala. Thank you for joining us. I think you've just given me an amazing job promotion. I'm not sure I want it, but I'm COO of Gala, but that's oh, fine. <laughs> that's what I, I have that written here. I thought I said that. <laughs> just don't, don't, um, don't tell Eric uh, that he's just been fired. Um. <laughs> COO. And you're in Britain? Correct or I am. I'm just um today I'm just outside of London, which is rather nice. So yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to dive deep today into Gala Film, the new sort of division of Gala Games and um Gala, um, just the whole arsenal. But first, just what's your background? How'd you get into crypto? Yeah, so I've I've got a funny story with how I got um specifically into Gala, actually. I I kind of got tricked into working here. <laughs> So I never intended, I've never had, um, I've always worked for myself basically. So I've been in the blockchain space for a long time, um, but it was fintech really. So lots of the more, I would say, um, boring is too strong a word, but maybe practical uh, use cases of, of blockchain um, and, you know, dabbled a bit in, in crypto and kind of got into the, the NFT space independently, you know, prior to, to Gala. Gala was one of those companies at the time that, you know, had Townstar and it was emerging and uh, a very good friend of mine uh, started to lean in and sort of talk to them about some of the experiences he'd had and some of the build projects he'd been involved in. And eventually, having uh, been with them for, for some time, he kind of uh, started talking about their explosive growth and all of the things that as companies grow that they need and they change and the founding team, which was, you know, when he was there, there was sort of 10 of them. And the need for a, a, a sort of a COO, somebody that could grow into the role and, and help the company scale. And we talked about, you know, we've worked for some very big consultancies as guns for hire as well and, and run agencies and things like that in the past, too. So we were talking about all of these different skill sets that you could need that could be useful as a company grew. And every suggestion he made for somebody that Gala should probably employ, I basically said that was a bad idea. And this is why. And you need somebody that has this weird range of skills like me. And then the next thing I knew, he was laughing and put me on a phone call with Eric Schirmeyer. Uh, and then that, the rest is history. So um, Gala now I've been, you know, we were 20 when I when I joined with 350 people now uh, over. And um, so it has it, it has grown so rapidly. And I think what's interesting is as challenging as the blockchain space is, the technology, the stuff we're doing, you know, we, we're no um, we're no strangers to falling on our face, to making mistakes, to to wanting to say we need a redo and we're sorry um, and to correcting our course. So all of that's new and and challenging. At the same time, we're growing a fully remote uh, global company uh, where we're trying to implement different ways of working, different structures. We hate hierarchy. We hate corporate bullshit. We want people to be able to bring their best selves to work. We want women that actually have young children and men who have young children to have a work-life balance. So we, we have this really interesting, I think, challenge as a company where we're doing everything at once and we're trying to do it better and in a different way than has ever done before. And that makes it the single most tiring <laughs> and challenging role I've ever had, but it's, in, it's incredibly fulfilling. Um, and now, of course, uh, games was a big enough business, right? The games industry, we know the size of it, double the size of film and music combined, like huge. And we decided that that clearly wasn't enough and that actually we would go into music and film too, because why not? <laughs> so we've launched this this entertainment business and now we're growing in every d direction and employing you know the best people and and having some hiccups along the way that we're, we're learning from and we, you know we get bruised by that but we get better as a result of it so um that's kind of the checkered history as sarah buxton how she ended up on your screen so for which i can only apologize <laughs> no i love it i love the candidness i love the uh, authenticity let's just jump right in what is gala film the new division of Gala? Gala film is something that it wasn't, um, it looks like it might be a bit of a spontaneous why not, and even the way I phrased it there. Um, it's not. 
Um, the reason it's not is because games are these hours and hours, sometimes days long experiences that are highly immersive. You look at the fidelity of games that are being produced now and even the ones that we've got in flight. And, and we've been poked about that a few times. You know, when we had Galaverse um, back in May, we actually showcased nine games. Nine games that you could sit on a screen and play. Um, and I don't know there's many companies in the blockchain space that can do that. And the 28 games we've got in flight are either triple or double A. So we are really sort of going after this sort of um, no compromise on experience to actually do something that, that's different in the blockchain space, you know, using uh, this sort of whole premise about content ownership. And when you roll that forward and you say, okay, well, actually film in many ways and I know I'm a Brit, so I call movies films, but film really is a catch-all for film content. So it can be movies, it can be documentaries, it can be shorts, it can be animation. So it's that whole classification. And actually we got quite inspired last year with one of the projects we're, we're working with. They came in and they wanted to do a game. That's where the conversation started. But some of the art guides and the story behind it and the characters they were delivering, I was like, oh my goodness, this would be an amazing series. And I think what's really exciting about film done this way is that interoperability between film and games. You know, what if a game impacted a film? What if a film impacted a game? What if you had gamification where you had to do something to unlock the next level of content? Now, previously, those narratives have always been trapped in games, you know, stuff like Assassin's Creed, where you go through and you feel like you're part of this whole wonderful fabric of a story. But what if actually the emphasis was maybe the other way around and, and then you actually own the content? And I think that's where we became <laughs> incredibly excited, started looking at projects out there. Um, our focus, and we haven't quite got it right with music. I think we've done some adjustments internally on that to start delivering against our promises there. But it is about sort of new content creators. It is about new formats. It is about discovering great ideas and unlocking new talent and giving people access to funds. Um, you know, NFT sales are great for that. And at the same time, you know, when I say people, I mean those creators. But at the same time, because those fans have engaged in a project so early, they can be involved in the writer's room. They can go on set. They can get the memorabilia and the props. They can maybe be in the actual movie. They can lend their NFT to the movie. So there's all of these ways that the movie experience doesn't need to be a cookie cutter, two and a half hour block of your life. It can actually be something that's a story that goes on much longer than that and is actually much richer than that as well, you know? And then you start attaching um, some of the watch and earn mechanics to it as well. Uh, to support that ecosystem, I think it becomes incredibly exciting. So the reason we're doing film is because there's a trifecta of entertainment. I love that word, trifecta. It sounds amazing. But, you know, music, games, film, and how they work together. So, and people have said, you know, golly, you're doing too much. And I'm like, can you not see from a game perspective how these things flow and belong? Like a game is nothing without music and story narrative like it cannot exist like it's not physically possible um, and film and music have never really got that bit like kind of queued up right I don't think so we're coming at it from a from another angle for sure and we're running hard we're running really hard <laughs> <laughs> nice running up that hill oh but, uh, Kate Bush <laughs> exactly anyways we all know that one now yeah, yeah. That's the everybody's theme song now, but uh, I played a gala game at uh, I think it was some crypto convention. Decentral. Yeah, decentral, decentral Miami. I played a gala game. It was a fun game. I can attest to that. Was it Spider Tank? Yeah, I think it might have been. Yeah, it might have been. I think uh, what's his name? Jason Brink was there showing us how to play. Yeah, the the best thing about Spider Tanks is um, well, there's lots of good things about Spider Tanks, but. Um, the guys behind that game media, um, who are actually based out in the Netherlands, uh, and Dipmar is one of the, he's just amazing. And they've got Stoda and they've also got um, Wizards and I think it's Warriors. Um, they keep changing the name on me, but there's another two games coming from that studio. And I love the fact that, you know, we're able to work with studios in South Korea. We're able to work with studios in, in Europe. We've also obviously got our US base. So, um, but yeah, D Dittmer's, um, you know, they're so flexible and they do so many fun things. And that's what's quite nice is the freedom to pick stuff up. I think they put a, um, they put a Snoop 
car in the game they've done they've done some up there's more stuff coming be, just because they're having fun and it's like oh my goodness isn't it nice that you can make games and actually have enjoyment from it as well rather than just having to stick to you know laborious contracts and all that kind of stuff so I do like um but yeah I like working with talented people like that they blow my mind like my slack channel is like a candy shop it's great <laughs> totally so it sounds like Gala Film is intertwined with Gala Music and intertwined with Gala Games. Thinking about like the long-term vision, is that is that the case? Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it has to, um, what's that expression? It has to wash its own face. I'm not sure if that's an expression you use in the US, so forgive me if you don't. Um, <laughs> but it has, to, it has to stand on its own two feet. There's another great one. Um, so the content on its own is compelling. It's unique. It's different. Uh, we are going to be playing with formats. We are working with, and we'll start releasing those names next week with some people that you'll be like, okay, uh, you're, you're having a proper run at this, guys. Um, we're working with some of the best, like uh, there's a creative studio over in Japan, um, you know, so we're really playing with those formats. We love anime as well. So in fairness, film can and will have this whole ecosystem, you know, that, that can, you know, look after itself and the compelling, uh, the content is compelling enough on its own. Then on top of that, where I come from with this is I feel like that's exciting and that's interesting and content ownership and the ability to be rewarded differently and have these experiences and for creators to be able to have that direct contact with fans and all of those wonderful things that's all great but I feel like we would be missing such a massive trick if stuff wasn't interoperable I mean literally what is the point of just taking something that exists doing a twist on the content format saying we're going to do some experiences and then put it on the blockchain doesn't really feel compelling enough for me so the short answer to your question is yes they will absolutely integrate and complement and you know we purposely have stayed one team so um we've got different you know obviously we've got different specialists and you know there is no way in hell I would mess with one of John Oswald's teams or Mark Skaggs' teams in Townstar and say come over here and help me with film a that would be completely random and B, uh, I would get told where to go. Like we're busy and we've got our own deadlines. But I think the fact that we all learn from each other's mistakes, we look at the strategies we run, you know, we understand that there's some, um, you will have heard about Townstar and, and the pausing of town, you know, the sort of the rewards there as well, we're obviously still running the competition. So we have to share that knowledge. We have to share those learnings with each other and, and work together and stay as a team, but at the same time, never distract each other either. So I'm thinking we're going to get that. Well, I'm thinking we're getting that balance right. It just takes a little bit of time. And obviously that hunt for talent is, is never ending because unlike the, the real world, um, you know, real is a perception, I guess, um, the, there's no finite number here. Like we can we can keep growing and expanding. And I think that's, when you're global and you say to people, all you need is, is a laptop, a bit of gusto and a skill that the community will love, uh, you can have a job with Gala, right? And I think that's that's pretty cool too. You might have to part with me, but you know, other than that, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, call the, I call the real world web zero. <laughs> but uh, anyways, so like thinking about it, um, Gala Film from the user point of view, the consumer point of view, and like just like, the distribution, how is the audience going to, how is this going to get distributed? Is this like a, a gala streaming platform? Okay, so this is all um, this is all new news. So I'm hoping that I'm not blowing too many things that I shouldn't be blowing ahead of time, but there we go. Um, we're using the, and I've used this analogy before, like down, down the rabbit hole and how far do you wanna go? So I, I look at a lot of my friends and my family who have, probably zero interest other than I work in it in web3 right now like the idea of having a wallet a seed phrase cryptocurrency they read the mainstream news or some of them do um and you know and there's a lot of fear and fud around it if you go onto twitter and you end up following the wrong accounts you would feel that it's it's not a very welcoming or nice place and there's a certain type of person that thrives here and then other people that just don't get a look in so from that perspective, I think it's very important that the content's accessible to people. Um, you can come, you can pay, and you can watch uh, exactly the same way as you would on a Netflix or an Amazon, or a, you know, if you've got a premium YouTube account or you watch the ads in order to the content to be paid for, whatever it is. So there's a very simple way to engage with the content. For us, distribution's an interesting one because we're not 
and I think this is really important, we're not trying to own anything. And that's the thing with Gala that people need to kind of get their heads around is that we're a platform. So all of the development people we work with, they own their own IP and they will continue to own their own IP. They own their stuff. How can we go out and preach about content ownership and then take you know, equity and, and IP away from the very people we're meant to be supporting. That that just literally makes no sense. Same with artists as well, incidentally, on the music side. So this is about giving them the flexibility of format. So yes, it would be exclusive on our platform from a blockchain perspective, but if it makes sense and it helps the community and it gets eyeballs on their on their film and on their creation, of course we will look at um, you know, broader platforms to to push stuff on. What we're trying to do is we're making a shift, a positive shift into Web3. That doesn't mean we are naive enough to think you can turn off Web2. Like it's not going to be a, a flick of a switch. It's a general sort of, it's, sorry, it's a gradual move over. And so what we're going to do is going to leverage a lot of those Web2 services to the benefit of Web3 so that everybody, it's, it's sort of this transition. So, and as long as the community that are bought into those NFTs that bought into the platform benefit from that. So a watch is still a watch, whether it's on Gala or not, it's still a watch. And as long as they benefit from that, we're happy, they're happy. And then the content producer, the creator is happy too. So there is that nice um, ability, I think, for exclusivity, but then to have that reach play, which is important for our industry, right? It's the same thing as when we were we were talking about grit and, and that title and, and putting it up on the on the Epic store. It, it was less about um, you know, the deal between Epic and Gala, it's more about the deal between Web 2 and Web 3 and saying, hey, guys, here's a portal into the new world for a lot of players and um, that we're not going to force, you know, NFTs and content ownership down their necks. They can just come and play a game and then they can start discovering what this world really is like without all of the maybe some of the FUD um, that is surrounding it, particularly in the games and gaming space as well. You should never ask me a question. Do you see how long my answers are? Because I can't like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this just, is what, just so much. <laughs> our audience has heard us. They want to hear from you. And you kind of already uh, were talking about this, but lay it out to me real simple. What is the benefit for a filmmaker or a studio launching a film on the blockchain instead of a traditional method like on YouTube or on Netflix? Oh, oh, oh I know the answer to this. So there's, it's uh, three things. The first is you're not sacrificing anything. You can still get the, the views and do the deals if that makes sense commercially for everybody involved. So we're not asking you to make a, a salient choice, if you like. There's a period of exclusivity. You are able to see where the money goes. It's on the blockchain. You don't need trust. Um, so you can see what's coming in. You can see who your fans are. You can get close to those fans. You can engage them in new ways. I think uh, a lot of the creators I speak to across you know, games, music, and film want to create they're inspired by people they want feedback they want to to you know create new experiences and i think this gives an opportunity to do something different and new and exciting and i think people like that um and then number three if you're doing those two things so you're you're producing you're getting views you're able to you know you're in control of and um, some of the commercials and one of the guys you know they're helping design the nft drops they would never get to decide the commercials around their own stuff before. They would never get to decide what, um, you know, depending on how the film's funded, where you go out to brands and you say, hey, put your car, put your restaurant, put your whatever it is into our movie and we'll charge you X and all that kind of stuff. Like these guys are now in control of a completely different commercial model um, because actually it's, it's far more about interoperable content and far more about fan engagement than it is about, you know, here's an amount of funding, we do the film, then the film goes out, then we, you know, then we all share the spores of that afterwards and it's quite high risk. So I think with those two things in your back pocket, what do you end up with? A more engaged fan base too. Um, you know, more love, more views. Um, and I think the idea that when you start to attach tokenomics to it, um, you can, you know, you just have a better experience overall because you're, you're getting paid to do something brilliant uh, that benefits the ecosystem as a whole. And I think what we've seen you see it with every company, um, any company, as soon as it grows, and I'm like this, you get really suspicious. And you're like, hang on a second, um, you've kind of become the kind of reason, the thing that you were trying to destroy in the first place, because people don't like it when anybody gets all powerful or anybody has more influence than we feel like they should have. And I think that's something not just to do with Gala, but in Web3 in general, 
that democratization, that decentralization, that spreading the wealth, that being able to, you know, share some of the responsibility, control, ownership allows an ecosystem to thrive rather than a corporate, you know, body of people. And I think that's where film, I'm hoping, as well as music and games eventually with this idea of self-service, platform, ecosystem health, the bigger it gets, the more people love it not the other way around, like the bigger it gets, the more people hate it. So I think there's a lot of to be said for, for being attached to something so early stage. It's got a long way to go. It's, you know, this is this is still, despite us all being in the space a while and me feeling like I'm about 84 years old, cue the Titanic gif, um, <laughs> you know, we are at the beginning of this crazy ass journey. And I think, you know, it's going to be the generations after us that step into this world that will you know, they're going to test us and see, did you build something that was really beneficial for the future? Or did you come in and just try and, and make some money, or, you know, in an opportunistic way? And I think, you know, Gala is very clear on our intent in the space. No, we don't always get it right. No, we don't always do things that everybody loves. Of course we don't. But yeah, we're going to stay and we're not planning on going anywhere. And we will keep putting money into the space. I mean, we've invested $450 million of our money this year. We've never raised any wow. money. So this is our money um, that we're putting back into the space because we understand this is a long-term play. Nobody's tapping out anytime soon. Uh, although, you know, we might get told, we've had enough of your face, Sarah, please tap out for a few interviews. But um, no way. generally speaking, we're, we're hanging around, you know? For sure. It, it is, I was just going to ask, uh, speaking of, you know, you guys, you know, raising that money, is Gala like more well-funded than your competitors? It just seems to me like Gala is like on a different level with partnerships and products and media and just like growth in general, like always expanding and like, you know, getting out there. Like what's, why is, why is Gala seemingly on a different level than so many? Well, what's interesting is we're not restricted because we've never raised money. So we're, we've made money and then we've reinvested money. So nobody gets to tell us what to do so we can move quick. So we've done deals you know, and I probably shouldn't say this, but we've done deals out of goodwill because it felt right and said the contracts will catch up because we can, because nobody's telling us we can't do that. And I think, you know, people come across Gala and we can do a deal within days because we've got the freedom to do that if it feels right. And we want to cut through some of that old corporate stuff. Now, of course, we have an absolute duty of care and a responsibility to people that have been with us a long time. So we're not going to be silly about it. Of course, we're not. But I think you know I've learned so much since being here and you know I'd, I've got a few battle scars of my own before I came to Gala right which is how you know you, you get better because you, you get good at failing and, and picking up and figuring it out but I think one of the things that I've learned in a really humbling way actually is bravery like it, it will you know it's not always going to go right but if you make that step forward no matter how difficult it is no matter whether you have having doubts whether you should or not you're still a step of some ahead of someone else. And then you have a choice because you've got a different viewpoint. You've got new information. And if you carry on like that, you'll stay ahead and you can do amazing things. Um, and then if you can build that team behind you, you've got it. Like whatever happens, you know, you'll figure it out. Um, it's just, you know, and that's what we're all doing. Nobody's got all the answers because this is a brand new space. So um, I think, yeah, being able to just put our money where our mouth is, work quick, work fast, work with the people that we believe in we've had a couple of partners that maybe have gone sideways and then it's having the you know the decency not to throw people under the bus but to say okay that didn't quite work out we'll move on and we'll grow from it as well and we'll, we'll rally around to to do better next time um but yeah i don't think there's any magic secret sauce really there's certainly no secret vc in the background thank goodness <laughs> so I totally get the value prop why filmmakers, why studios would want to get into something like this for the average mainstream, maybe not even crypto centric viewer consumer. Why would they care? Like what's the value prop for them watching film with gala? Um, I don't think it's about watching film with gala. I think it's watching a film you want to see. I think it's as simple as that. I think it's content that I'm interested in a documentary, a reality show, if that's your thing. Uh, a, a, an amazing series, a movie. Um, we might have uh, one of those in the pipe as well. So I think it's the, the content needs to move you, uh, not that, like you say, the value prop, because actually, 
um, that comes later. So if, it, if there's content on there I want to see, and, and you've only got to look at, you know, whether it's a music video, whether it's a reality show, or whether it's somebody just streaming a cooking show from their house, you know, we, we're human beings, we're social, we like to be taken away, we like to imagine things, we like to explore things. And I think whether that's, you know, a fantasy thing or a, a reality, and um, they show, it will be interesting. And so I think um, it's not about gala and gala's value proposition. It's about the content we put out, people being interested in it, and then coming in to explore. And, and when they come in to explore, that's when it gets interesting and exciting because then they can start looking at this thing actually I can participate in this ecosystem and there's lots of different ways I can participate in this ecosystem and like many um like many of our peers as well you know we're struggling with the with the pricing around ethereum we, we know the restrictions around that we're building our own blockchain for gaming because of those the, you know the speed and the, the the sort of the micro transactions you need for games mean that you just can't do a lot of that stuff on ethereum it just it doesn't make sense so we're having to do um, a, a lift there as well, just because, you know, why not? We're doing everything else. You might as well build a blockchain too. Uh, <laughs> luckily, that's been in flight for, for some time and is now being tested. So feeling really positive about um, Project Geary. Um, what we're trying to do with film, I think, is, is to make this space more accessible. I don't think it's about the NFT space today and all the coins as well, the volatility associated with it, the, the investment sort of slant of it. It's not for your everyday personal consumer, as you want to call them. It's not for the movie fan. It's it's almost for somebody that wants to speculate and accumulate. And I think that that's fine. And there's a there's a space for that too, you know, as well. Of course there is. But when you're doing an entertainment offering, the first and foremost thing you need to do, entertain people. Fun, engaging, desirable content, whether it's music, whether it's games, whether it's film. And then all of the added benefits of content ownership come afterwards. Um, and you can explore that and whether that's a, a 50 buck thing or you're going to invest in, um, you know, buying a node or spending time doing, you know, some of the other things that you can up your sort of, you know, your contribution to the ecosystem. That's all dependent on you, but it means you can get that really nice range of people and you can offer something to everybody, um, whether they want to be in, in Web3 consciously or, or not. I understand that, um, you know, many things are in the pipeline for longer than a year, but just like thinking about the next year, are there any cool content coming out for Gala Films? Yes. <laughs> so uh, we picked up things uh, in different stages of development as well. Um, so we've got, um, we'll have some really lovely stuff out on the platform later this year. And then there's a whole heap of stuff that will start arriving in springtime as well. So yes, the content is already flowing. And I think that's why, um, and we've done we've done it not so well recently. We used to in the past be very much we would show not tell, and I think the way the sort of you know people have started to notice Gala, we've grown a bit, and um, there's you know there's stuff said about us that we then feel the need you know rightly or wrongly to react to. So I think we've done a lot more talking and a lot more um, you know uh, hyping than we've ever done before, and I think with film. What we wanted to do is, is you know, let action, huh, see what I did there, film reference, action speak louder than words. Uh, and within a couple of weeks of launching the platform to, to have rewards live, to have content on there and for people to see, it. okay, this wasn't, um, you know, something that they did spontaneously because they thought there was an opportunity and why not? This is something the guys have been working on a while and it makes complete sense with the other two arms of the business to, to form that final sort of collective um, that can all support and work together. So uh, we need to deliver now. And I know the games business particularly, um, you know, they're in build mode. And that those teams, um, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have a good relationship with Mr. McCarthy, but I see all the Miranda updates and I see the pace that they're working at. And, you know, we share things across the business. Everybody in the company, myself included, you know, we do stand ups every day. We talk about our story points. We talk about our cadence. We talk about, you know, what our OKRs are. Like, we, we are a fully functioning business. We are not a project. We just are approaching things a little bit differently. That's all. Bucks, in our final five minutes, I want to zoom out and just talk big picture crypto stuff in general. Before we get mm -hmm. to that, final thoughts on Gala, anything we didn't mention? Uh, there's nothing you didn't mention. Um, I think 
it's it's an exciting journey the only the only thing I would say is you don't have to be on all of it if you love gala for games we've got that you know 26 games nine um, playables at Galaverse lots coming out this year I was on the phone to the guys this morning there's a, another play test happening with one of our other titles um, in a few weeks time like they are the game side of the business are absolutely producing now um, and I think it's one of those things that if that's what you discovered Gala for if that's what you're following Gala for that's not going away and no you don't need to be a fan of film and music um, to be part of the Gala ecosystem. You can absolutely, this is this is your world. You're in complete control of it and the community can do what the hell it wants. You don't have to be part of anything you don't want to be and we'll never force it down, down your throat. Um, so, you know, please pick and choose. And the same thing is, you know, if, you, if you've never been a gamer and if you don't like games, but you happen to like film, then come and, come and watch some content and you don't have to make any more commitment than that. Just come and have a look um so yeah no no hard sell from from me today on that stuff and by the way links for bucks and gala all down below in the video description check them out zooming out efficient. exactly mm-hmm. exactly um zooming out general thoughts on these bearish times in crypto from a bird's eye view yeah so i haven't looked at my crypto portfolio i didn't get out of stuff i i tend to i'm a i hold my my nfts uh, whether it's art, whether it's the game stuff from Gala, which I incidentally always buy on OpenSea because I never get to make bloody drops. But anyway, um, so yeah, I, you know, I'm another, I was absolutely, I, I've lost a lot and I, you know, and that's fine. I know everybody has. Uh, thank goodness I have a job. Um, do I worry about it? Well, yeah, it has a, it has a financial implication, obviously. And we, we often say to people in our community, like, don't overextend yourself. Don't put stuff in that you can't afford to lose because you don't, there are no guarantees with any of this stuff. You know, please don't over, overreach and put yourself in a difficult position. Um, you know, last year we were in a position where we gave out $2.2 billion in rewards and distribution to our community, which made a huge difference to a lot of people, whether they were settling debts or, you know, some uh, family in the Philippines bought the first house that their family had ever owned in the family's history. You know, so there's some lovely good good news stories in, in, in bullish times. And then obviously in bearish times, the opposite happens, right? And you hear some absolutely horrific things that have been going on. Do I think the the bear market's here to stay? Of course not. And, um, you know, I know that, you know, the economic climate, not even just in the US globally, is is not in a brilliant spot right now. And obviously crypto is, is you know, inadvertently connected to that, even though we're trying to do something a little bit different. Um, I think I the philosophical view on all of it from, you know, people like, like you guys as well that are in the space is this is the time to build. This is the time when, people that are coming in trying to take money out of the ecosystem without really bringing and putting value back into it, they will go to the wall. They will disappear because people have got wise. A lot of us have got burn. I've been involved in stuff that's definitely gone sideways that you're like, holy, I wish I had known and I should have done more research before I yeeted in. And so I think we're, we'll come back, we'll learn, um, we'll get a little bit tougher on projects. We'll get a little bit cuter on timelines and roadmaps. Um, and I think that the strong will survive exactly the same way as when the internet came to being in the first place. You know, we had the initial star and then the big boys, the, the grown ups came in <laughs> and started developing. I just hope this time around that the grown ups are better people and better corporations than we saw the last time, because it would be a real shame if we just history completely repeated itself. That would be a massive miss. Um, but yeah, this, this, this movement's here to say there's too many people involved in it now. It can't be stopped. There's too many people. Um, I think we've got the masses on our side now and, and we've only just started. Right. So that's exciting. I sound a little bit anarchistic or, you know, like an anarchist and I, I don't mean to, but yay. We're Everybody's <laughs> a little bit anarchist in crypto. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, speaking about your portfolio and obviously taking Gala out of it and just thinking about like Bitcoin and Ethereum, what are you more bullish on? Like, what do you like more? I'm holding more Ethereum still. I held it all the way down. <laughs> all, 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 all the way down. Um, so then I, I've, yeah, so I've, I've loaded up a bit more on that. It's, it's interesting with Ethereum because 
and we're one of them that you know we're one of those people that does it as well like we talk about moving away from ethereum all the time um which is you know um but i i think that there's enough of a market there um for ethereum you know still to be a good you know it's a good token to hold in my personal opinion um you know i'm not going to I'm not going to uh, divest it. Um, and then I think there'll be more tokens to buy. I'm, I'm looking at Flare with great interest as well, the moves they're making over there. I think, you know, Polygon as a, as a company are doing some amazing stuff, you know. So there's some, there's some good players out there with some, with some tokens attached as well that I think are interesting too. Uh, again, from my personal perspective, that is absolutely not investment advice. I would give the worst. I've lost loads of money. Please don't listen to anything I say. Uh, other than when I'm talking about the team I actually work with and can affect. Um, everything else is too macro and just mere speculation. Uh, so, yes, take it with a pinch of salt, please. I thought it was, I thought it was interesting, Flair. I feel like I get why Polygon, you know, is, has a lot of excitement, but why do you like Flair? I, so I, I've, I've spent a little bit of time following Hugo and I've met Hugo a couple of times. I quite like... Um, I like their view on the world and what they're building, what they're trying to build. And I think they're just, from a partnership perspective, I find them incredibly interesting. And I don't think we have quite seen their whole roadmap yet. I think they're pretty good at what we used to be good at, which is holding information back and coming out quite strong and surprising the market. So I know that they've got, um, they've got some solid friends. Um, and I'm just interested with with things going live for them, where they go next. Um, but that they've got a you know a very low cost um, proposition as well. So I think they're quite an interesting interesting company, and I, I like Hugo as well <laughs> as an individual. I'm not sure that has any basis on his company, but he seems you know he's a nice guy. <laughs> for sure, no, he's, I get he's it. He's a Brit too, you know. He's in London, so he's not far down the road from me, uh, and we will be talking in 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 the not too distant future. So yeah. Final question. If you could go back to your younger self when you first entered crypto, what's a piece of advice you would give your younger self? <laughs> you should have bought that ape. Me too. And you Relatable. probably, yeah. Punks, okay. There was a few, but the apes felt overpriced and they weren't. <laughs> And, and, and how does that translate, you know, some, something practical that, you know, is that you telling yourself be more open-minded or look for the trends harder? Yeah, I think um, it's, a re that, it's a really good question. I think if I went back now, be, go less on your own instinct and, and dive into some of these communities. Because actually a lot of the key, like a lot of the clues are there already. And I think with anything you well, with me particularly, I'll do some research and then I'll exactly like I said, like my gut instinct will say that's too expensive or that's a good idea. And actually there is no gut instinct in a space that's brand new. That's ridiculous. Like there's, there's no precedent for what's going on. So the best thing you can do is go and listen to an AMA with the founder, go in, you know, nowadays, like you can dive into the Twitter spaces, you can join the discord and just get a sense of what's going on there. And then you're, I think, far better equipped. I'm very, um, I'm very skeptical on, you know, I come from a brand, you know, messaging, you know, I've done a lot of product design, proposition design. I know how to write something, right? A lot of people know how to write something. And I think there's like the art of a beautiful website and a really nice white paper with a load of fancy charts on it and a nice roadmap and all the caveats that come with it. They're great. And if I was looking to raise money, that's interesting that you can put together a pitch deck. But what are the people on the ground saying? What are the current holders saying? What, you know, how many people are joining that Discord? What is the growth rate looking like? How many partners are coming on board? You can tell a lot about people with people that they work alongside. And um, because there is always a due diligence process, if you're going to bring on, you know, and even when you look at something like Doodles that bought on Pharrell, you know, Pharrell is not going to risk his brand working with a company that is in any way looking like it's, you know, a little bit unstable, like he's just not going to do it. So I think when you when you start to dig into those kind of signals, that's when you can get a better sense of is this just shiny or is there actual substance underneath? 
and people turning up when um you know problems start as well if people go silent when there's an issue that worries me as well um when there's a criticism that's when you actually step up into the breach and, and you have to have those tough conversations whether you're right or wrong it, it really doesn't matter you've still got to be there so I think it's the the surrounding world rather than the the presented world that's important. Sarah Buxton, thank you so much for sharing your time. Links for Gala for you are down below. Final thoughts for the Altcoin Daily Army. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. And I'm sorry for giving the longest answers in the world. Apologies. And if I've said anything that's wrong, forgive me because I am just a motor mouth and I, I don't mean any harm, really. <laughs> I loved it. Great conversation. Thank you.